Hey guys, what's up? Aru. Now, I was supposed to make this video way back in 4.0, but a lot of things happened, so I couldn't make time for my new found favorite, Root Civilization. But now I can at least make a proper video highlighting everything we know about the Golden Kingdom and its eternal symphonies. So today we'll be going over the lost and sunken kingdom of Remoria, what it looks like based on lore, and what we can expect from it. King Remus, as well as the people of interest involved in the creation and fall of this kingdom, the eternal symphony, as well as the fourth tuna not the ship the concept but we will also talk about the ship the remnants and splinter groups that were assumed to be formed after its fall and what that entails and its relation to the quests that we've experienced in the current day to that finally its relations to celestia and the heavenly principles as well as their system of prophecies and fate as always timestamps below for any specific segments that you wish to watch let's go the ancient sunken kingdom of Remoria is implied to be this quote-unquote golden kingdom, with gold, bronze, and glazed walls, giant temples carved from rocks, and unnumbered amounts of marbled statues. It also had lots of gold, which I think means mora in this context, which piled up the nation's market along with the spices and specialties imported from all over the world. This is just one of Remoria's regions called Makimos. Before entering Makimos, we would see a tall tower that guides lost sailors called the Tower of Remoria. Now this tower was said to be standing at the border of reality and dreams and it could keep away sailors from a siren's call. We can sort of assume that sirens were oceanids for this context, considering the oceanids from Liwe would also lure people from the Bishwi River and fuel its power. And that the Lochfolk were already present at the time because Egeria was created and replaced the old heart of the Primordial Sea and allegedly created oceanids as well as other things. But another thing unique to Remoria can be found in the Capitolium, the center of Remoria with an almost built-in usage and mastery of music and arts overflowing with delightful aromas and beautiful melodies, which was a so-called paradise for artists where only the most outstanding musicians and intellectuals were allowed entry. Capitolium had these grand theaters and palaces that were only made using the most harmonious shapes, whatever that meant. The structures in Capitolium were designed with beams and domes that were adorned with only the most sumptuous and intricate carvings, which was in line with their idea of harmony of all things. Harmony in shapes, harmony in music and arts, and harmony in architecture. Think of the columns and volute designs and arches or domes that you would often see in Roman structures. Very symmetrical and calculated with mathematical designs that complement every part of their architecture. Aqueducts that were designed to adorn the already harmoniously built cities and houses that work in harmony with established theaters, forums, and agoras. This was what Remoria looks like based on lore, and it was heavily inspired from Rome, not just from a historical and name standpoint, but also its architecture and overall design of the city. In the middle of the Capitolium is the Golden Palace of King Remus, filled with copper pillars, which I think also reflects Roman palaces, designed with lots of Roman columns. Now with regards to lore, it was created and ruled by King Remus, who descended onto Tevat with his golden ship, the Fortuna. He first descended on a place called Meropis, and was where he first taught humans all their basic needs as well as teaching music and the arts. It's worth noting that King Remus himself was also a pretty godly musician. It was said that a pluck of his strings could correct any quote-unquote discordant sounds in his empire. This concept of musical perfection and harmony was so ingrained into the Remorian dynasty that it became a symbol to the humans of that time and that it was what differentiated humans from other living things. The term Fortuna itself is also more of a concept than an actual ship or object, and its real definitions as well as its significance changed as time passed by, starting from a sort of power that controlled the world with countless string-like fibers, just like King Remus's instrument, whatever it was, then it became a recurring prophecy about civilizations' rise and fall, which was related to the kingdom of Remoria's fall, as well as other succeeding kingdoms, and then becoming the current day knowledge that it was the name of King Remus's ship when he first came to the world. Quick tangent, it was said that through Remus's divine inspiration, finding a seer named Sibylla taking on the form of a golden bee. The name Sibylla could be a nod to the Sibyls, which were prophetesses or 
oracles that predicted and prophesied a lot of important events like the Trojan Wars as well as the coming of Christ. As for the golden bee, that could be a relation to the Thraye, or Thrae, which were basically three sacred virgin nymphs capable of divination. The reason for that whole side tangent on oracles and prophetesses is because Fontaine's prophecy of the flood was prophesied by Celestia through not only King Remus's seers, but also through Egeria, which also happened. In a sort of related sense, Enkanomia's Abrax or Aberaku also created the Hyperion, or the Dainichi Mikoshi, through divination of East Easteroth's will to guide humanity. So it's possible that Sibylla could be one of the envoys of heaven, either the Three Moon Sisters, the Four Shades, or the Seely. Back to actual lore, King Remus also had four Harmosts, two of them being Cassiodor and Boethius. These Harmosts were basically demigod generals that were given a share of Remus's power and authority. Sadly, at the time, King Remus got a bit too focused on the prophecy that his eternal kingdom would fall. So he told his Harmosts to quote-unquote eliminate discordant sounds, which basically means conquest. Taking over as much land by asking nicely first, but if anyone would decline, then Remoria's armies would claim it through war and plague, which happened with Egeria and her people, Erenice the Lock Knight, and Cassiodor who joined them after meeting Boethius. It's worth noting that Egeria at this time was sealed away somewhere for her original sin of creating Oceanid humans. Remus also did some human experimentation, mixing the primordial sea and an immortal stone and then dissolving humans into it. This is also likely the same time when Egeria told Remus the secret to saving his civilization, but it didn't exactly turn out well. Remus's ploy to tamper with primordial waters that aren't allowed to humans is similar to Egeria's sin, but this allowed him to create a quote-unquote golden ichor that could contain both the mind and soul of humans and then place them in golems, essentially making them immortal. That and his plan to replace the entirety of the primordial sea with the golden ichor which in and of itself I think is also a sin against Celestia. So basically he committed three of the worst ever crimes under Celestia's laws which was worse than Egeria's in my opinion. He also created royal fairways, which are channels of open areas that help convey the melodies of the Capitolium and basically blot out every other discordant sound, creating what he calls an eternal symphony or Symphonia Capitoli, which is basically a barrier of music that he thought would keep the prophecy from happening. To help with this, his Harmost Boethius, after finding out Remus's plan, went out and hunted his own barbarian people, the Lockfolk and Bishops alike, while also aiding with dissolving humans. The other Harmost, Cassiodor, was more considerate and a bit more intellectual than Boethius. He cared for the people, both barbarians and Remorians, while Boethius considers that a weakness. Sadly, we don't know anything about the other two Harmosts. Anyway, rebellion ensued and the dragon king Scylla, or Scylla with his army of bishops and barbarians, would come to destroy Remoria. Erenes, the Lock Knight, also led her own separate rebellion group into Remoria for the sake of Egeria. Eventually, the prophecy did happen and Remoria sank to the bottom of the sea. And as King Remus tried to save his kingdom, calling in his golden troop and restore peace, the Harmos Boethius, consumed by his own madness, saw that as an act of betrayal to the very philosophy that he thought of for Remoria. So he took the golden ichor and sealed not only the dragon Scylla, but the capital as well, which I think includes the Capitolium and the golden palace of King Remus. Today, Remoria is said to still be standing, but is faded and not one soul lives there. No echoes of the harmonious symphony and no epic poems and arts remain. But when the symphonies of King Remus's palace and the Capitolium's music plays once more, the Golden Troop, which is Remus's loyal army, will be rewarded for their loyalty and truth. Funnily enough, there are accounts saying that some of the Golden Troop survived when Remoria sank and more or less became friends with the Vishaps after that entire ordeal and then creating their own settlements for exiles and deserters for the 
once Golden Kingdom. One of those could be Cassiodor, aptly named the Golden Hunter, a name that he was very embarrassed of, which is where the Marishuse Phantom's original name is credited from. The other two Harmosts could also have survived, as well as Boethius. After this point, there was quite a gap of lore since no one really recorded anything for years regarding what happened with Remoria's fall and, well, what happened after. Since humanity was basically recuperating at the time and the few who survived, Golden Troop or not, could only fashion tales of the past based on their own memories. And we all know how erosion and memories work when it comes to Genshin. We do know that Egeria was freed by Celestia from wherever she was sealed in and became the Hydro Archon, which is around 3,000 years ago. So the next related lore at this point is of Egeria's rule, as well as the Nartisan Kreutz and the Ordo, all of which I won't be covering in this video. So now, let's move on to some interesting theories about Remoria. Remoria to me is one of the more interesting places in Fontaine, and honestly I think it deserves more attention than the Primordial Sea and the Nartisan Kreutz. That and Egeria's rule which is still shrouded in mystery because of the Cataclysm and the establishment of the Seven. You could think of Remoria as similar to Gurabad or the old Mondstadt during the Era of Kings, of which Remoria was created after the fall of Gurabad. Remoria is also one of the three so-called root cycles throughout Tevet's cycle of dynasties. First is the Hyperborea, symbolizing the frozen world and the lost paradise. Second is Natlantian, which symbolizes the triumph of humanity against dragons and the beasts within themselves. Remoria and Crown Arya are the third, symbolizing the relationship of humanity and the gods. These root cycles or races symbolize the significant development stages of human evolution. Interestingly, the first root race in actual theosophy is about the imperishable land, of which in Genshin could be when the primordial one ruled. But I digress, I'm gonna save that for a different video. Something I am excited to see is how music and the arts would be conveyed in the game, and how it can interact with whatever musical instruments and the symphonies the Capitolium has. That and the idea or concept of music as well as Fortuna, which I think ties with Stella Fortuna. You could think of connecting constellations as strings and plucking or manipulating such strings would be similar to manipulating someone or something's fate. Their quote-unquote intoxication for music and the idea that fate is an instrument that can be played rather than a loom to create and weave fates is an interesting way to comprehend it as well. The abyss is also intoxicating to abyss dwellers, so maybe there's a connection there somewhere? I don't know. Now with regards to its location, I honestly think it's the closest to the primordial sea than any other place, especially around the Capitolium or King Remus's Golden Palace, which is likely near his Golden Acre experiments. We can also expect that it's likely going to be underneath the water somewhere, probably deeper than the Fortress of Meropede, which is funny since Meropis is the over-exaggerated form of Atlantis. Meropis had three cities, Makimos, Anostos and Eusebius. Makimos was where warriors are from, Anostos was the yawning abyss, and Eusebius was the luxury city. For Remoria, Makimos was already accurate enough to be where the warriors are from, Eusebius is likely the Capitolium itself as well as King Remus's golden palace, and Anostos I would guess is where the primordial sea is, which is awfully close and is literally held back by the fortress of Meropede. Unless Remoria had its own area that was really close to the primordial see. Egeria and her people could also be found here, if not mentioned in lore. Sirens were also said to be near the Tower of Remoria and could lure sailors, so we may or may not get some more Oceanids in the future. We could possibly get more lore on Erinys herself as well as her relations with Cassiodor who also came from the same tribe. That and a deeper look into what the Golden Troop thought of King Remus versus Boethius and his people's views as someone who also went mad for Remoria's sake. The golems that housed the screaming souls of dissolved humans could also be found here, as well as maybe a new form of Vishaps and possibly a lore drop from Scylla, the Dragon King of the Depths, along with a possible small quest that links with Elenus and how some Melusines know how to use Remorian instruments. Remember that conch? Yeah. I also hope we could get lore from Nibelong, but that's a bit too much from a stretch, or at least a new book that could lead us into more Natlan lore. 
Natlantian is also a root cycle, and it's related to defeating the dragons. So maybe that's where our next lore drop is gonna be. Next is the people of Remuria itself, or maybe their remnant memories similar to Enkanomia is also possible. Hopefully they're more humanoid and less hydromimic looking. An opening that leads to the primordial sea is also a likely possibility, similar to Vache's lab way back in 4.0, as well as the Narcissus boss from the Narcissus and Kreutz quest. The Wingalet, which is inspired from King Remus's Fortuna, is also a good point to continue from if we're looking for a story. Maybe we might even find the Fortuna itself and know more about its concepts. That and I also want to see more of the Wingalet being used, like the smaller flying vehicles in Fontaine. It made headlines in the Steambird along with Fontaine's Flood, but I feel like its exposure and further information was quickly disregarded after that. Finally, the idea of Celestia's prophecy that is specifically made for Tevet that we can hopefully get more information on. Even though we found out about the Apocalypse and the World Formula from the Nartisan Kreutz, I do wish we could find the reason for it from another sunken kingdom that shares Egeria's secrets. But secrets from those topics are better off in a different video anyway. So for now, that's all we can talk about regarding Remoria. And there we go, everything about Remoria plus some theories and what we can expect all in one nice quick video. Comment below, will we see Erinese once Remoria comes or will Forina finally meet Egeria and Fosalor again? Or is Cassidor going to be a new playable character. Honestly, Remoria and Egeria's rule is my favorite lore in Fontaine, so making a video on that hopefully helps let people know about how cool the old world of Fontaine is. The idea of a kingdom that functions completely on music is such an interesting way to create a civilization. Reminds me of the dwarven race in Skyrim if you know what I mean. And using Roman inspirations as well as a sunken continent is definitely one way to make it more mysterious. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment, if you enjoyed, subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!